absolutely tragic. The family of a Soweto man killed outside a primary school in Protea Glen is completely devastated. 34-year-old Eugene Chililo was killed in front of his son during an attempted hijacking. All of this taking place at pickup time outside the primary school yesterday afternoon. Gauteng Education MEC Matome Chilwane visited the school a little earlier today. Now, senior reporter Avi Umtila was there. He's spoken uh, to the grieving family as well as others. And he joins us now. Avi, I mean, this is just shocking. This is pickup time. Kids are streaming out of school. The little ones are excited, especially primary school. There's energy in the air. What actually happened? Because it sounds like a completely brazen disregard for the fact of all these little ones around in the area. Sally, it's an absolutely devastating story that has left the family of Eugene Chilolo shattered. Um, the 34-year-old went up to pick up his 7-year-old son at Faranani Primary School. Uh, it is broad daylight uh, at around just before 2 o'clock when this incident happened. The family believes that um, while they were targeting the Toyota Avanzas, uh, the scholar transport there, they then noted Chilolo in his car with his 7-year-old son. And uh, it seems like they, Chilolo knew these perpetrators, hence they decided to then uh, take him out of the way so they wouldn't have any witnesses. In fact, the the saddest part of all of this is that the seven-year-old son was in the car at the time, saw it all happen, and was the one that had to relay this information to the family and the school itself. In fact, I wanted to take a listen to the family spokesperson, who also happens to be Chilolo's um, cousin, as he details the type of person that Chilolo was and also how they found out as a family. The person who explained to us it's his son, because the whole incident happened while his son was watching. The son said, apparently there were four guys who were hijacking a, second, a certain lady, and then they pulled the son out, out of the car. And he was with other kids. They pulled him out of the car, and they tried to pull Eugene out of the car. They said he should get out, and he couldn't. He didn't want to get out of the car, so they ended up shooting him. So they suggested that the idea behind it's like, probably Eugene knows, knows those guys. So they were scared that Eugene is going to be a witness. So that is why they decided to kill him. Mm. How is the son doing now? He's so traumatized. You can imagine a seven-year-old son. Mm. He's so traumatized. Mm. He's so shattered. He's so broken. He's, he's a mess. So they weren't actually after Eugene's car. This sounds to me, from what the family spokesperson is saying, like an assassination because they realized he could identify them. That's the, the exact case. Hence, now they're still on the loose. Uh, no arrests being made at this stage, given that Eugene couldn't identify them. So it was a targeted attack on Eugene, given that he was there mm. and knew these perpetrators and tried to get them out of the way. So basically, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, in the sense that uh, there was already an attempt to hijack an Avanza, which is a scholar transport bus of a seven-seater or so. You've also spoken to a woman who's one of the drivers, um, and she had to make a quick getaway. I mean, tell us about that. Before I tell you that, Sally, just Protea Glen alone, yeah. alone has been high spates of crime. The councillor, when I spoke to the councillor, suggested that just on Saturday they woke up to a dead body. Yesterday was Eugene Chilolo's death outside a school in the brazen manner that it happened in. Today, this morning, they woke up to another dead body. So there are these alarmingly high spates of um, crime and criminality murders mm -hmm. around Protea Glen. Then, coming to the specific woman, Ivy Koza, just after this incident happened, where this hijacking was happening, they took this Toyota Avanza. She's also a scholar driver who they then turned their attention towards. They wanted... Um, Ivy Koza's car as well and she managed to escape with also learners inside the car as she tried to get away frantically driving away as they even took out guns as she kept on looking behind her seeing that she was in danger running away with these children in fact let's take a listen to Ivy Koza detailing her own experience nearly 25 to 2 2 25 to 2 then I ke fihla ke ya ema le that lady wa bong ba reng ke bonga ntse makadi avance re le thong ha re fihla re ema then na ke tsama ke mo gating ke tsa ngwana ha ke tsa ngwana immediately ha ke bo wa ke fihla mo koloing koloya ka wa samoe mo mo pele mo 
then ke ku tlo ya sound ya sthunya kwa ga ke re ke wawa ha a wa ke nka ngwana ke mkenya mo koloing then ke kwala minyako ke reverse ha ke reverse ke bona a ke re ke mshebi de ona mantsi ke reverse ke ba bona re ba khombile bongane and then bongane ke na school a tsa manka ka bana ne wo a wa advance ba ha je ke le mobane o ba ke o ke ba then i keep ka ke ka matsa ka matsa ka mke ba bona re jona koloing se le mo 180 ha le mo 180 ba tswa ka ma faster ba ba tla o etsang ba ba tla o thunya so no ona le koloing ya ma traffic ha wa se ke tswa proja tsela e e ya nkakwa ya hlaella then ne ke no bulel faster ja se ba thong khona le hijacking and nna ka ba le so nthwe e le mo guys yo go bet mona go bet i don't want to lie ha re se ifi I mean, this is astonishing that uh, people who drive buses for children who are meant to drive at a slow, steady play pace and get children to and from school safely are having to drive uh, like absolutely crazy speeds to get away from the scene of an accident. Talk to me about what education uh, and law enforcement officials are saying to you about this, what they're going to do to make this area safer, whether they've made any arrests. No arrests at this stage. Um, some of what I got from the police that were on the ground today, suggesting that there are no suspects, given that there were no um, eyewitnesses uh, per se. Education MEC was also visiting the school as well as the family and did say that they'd be having a conversation with uh, community and safety to beef up policing around these schools. They want policemen presence on the grounds at the schools. In fact, something that um, the Premier touched on just on Friday as he was announcing his council and his executive, suggesting that there should be 6,000 boots on the ground. So they're saying that out of those 6,000 boots, there should be a dedicated police officer in each and every school around Gauteng. But of course, at the heart of this is the devastation that has left um, the family there. We visited the family, the mother there uh, flanked by the actual wife of Eugene Chilolo, both sobbing uncontrollably. We couldn't get a word from the wife, but we did get um, just some sense of what they're going through from the mother of Eugene Chilola. Let's take a listen to that. I mean, it is so painful to watch her pain. Um, a sweet young man, 34-year-old Eugene Chilolo, picking up his son, being a great dad, um, and he gets caught up in this. Uh, and the ripples of the pain from that one death, that little boy, his son, will live with that forever. Uh, the community will be touched by that forever and his family. It just absolutely reminds us that every awful statistic carries a massive heartbreak behind it. Um, who are they looking for exactly? Do they have any idea who these people are, how many there are of them, um, and why they targeted this school? So there's been no official confirmation from the police to exactly what they're looking for. But from what we've picked up on the ground, given the eyewitness account of the seven-year-old son, which was shared to us by Felicia Kaisa, the um, family spokesperson and the cousin, she did mention that the son mentioned four people that were on the ground. What we do know at this stage is that there were no arrests. While they got away with the Avanza initially chasing after the second Avanza, the, the Evanza was eventually recovered. Uh, we understand it was dumped somewhere. Um, so both Evanzas uh, have been recovered, but at this stage there have been no arrests, and as we know it, there are no suspects at this stage. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and tragically, Eugene would have been a witness 
but he was killed. And now it seems one of the only witnesses who really saw what was going on is his seven-year-old son, uh, possibly also the lady in the Avanza as well. But just, yeah, it's absolutely heartbreaking. But thank you for bringing us uh, that story. That senior reporter there, Avi Wemtila, telling us about that horrific incident that happened yesterday afternoon outside a primary school in Proteoglen in Soweto.